This is Chicho. What we're going to do in this video is uh, do a little introduction to the next set of readings we're going to do for the comic book uh, section of the site. And um, if you've been following the comic book videos I'm putting out, I did a little intro and mentioned that I'm just going to start producing some uh, comic book related videos um, for a larger purpose, but basically mainly focused on comic books. And um, we did some readings. Um, we did uh, six readings. I grabbed six books from my collection and we read through them. We did some framings and um, you know, produced about an hour plus video of um, sort of going through some of the comic books uh, in my collection. Um, and after that, I sort of got the comic book bug uh, big time in me. So I went ahead and um, I'd done a, a big purchase uh, on eBay and what we did was uh, I put out a couple of videos going through or three videos uh, going through the comic book boxes that I bought my comic book haul and um, you know I still have the comic book uh, bugging me and uh, I love sharing uh, uh, sharing the stuff with you guys I just love sharing comics uh, that's one of the main things with the comic industry is uh, uh, you love sharing these stories because they're amazing a lot of them right um so over the last couple of months i guess uh, i've been putting books aside uh, to read and like uh, anyone that's um you know if you're actively reading comics uh, what you end up doing is uh, you start buying comics and you create a pile and you'd be lucky to go through some of that pile so what i want to do right now is sort of go through the comics that I put together in a pile to do readings for and we didn't go through all of it but we went through a nice chunk of it I was really happy with that uh, as uh, if you watch some of the videos uh, of the readings uh, you notice that I get a little bit excited because um, I've been meaning to read some of these books uh, for the first time and reread some of these books um, so what I want to do if if you're interested in the uh, the comic books that we are, we are going to read I'm not going to tell you what they are right now because uh, you know I, I would usually just flash the images and have hyperlinks going to them but I think part of the fun is uh, not knowing what's coming up next uh, so what I'll do is uh, I'll put the description in uh, you know the comics that we're going to read in the description of this video and you know they will pop up uh, the links so you can go do the readings as we talk about them and I will provide the links in the video at the end okay I just decided not to do it right now because uh, part of the fun is to see what's coming up next I think um, but what I am going to do is uh, show you some of the comics that um, we didn't get through I'm gonna go through these ones fast um, just to give you a feel and we might come back to these okay um, now some of the comics uh, I wanted to get to were um, some independent comics um, that I got a hold of and one of them is um, is this thing called uh, plop and I got a hold of this after someone posted a comment um, um, I did a reading for mystic number six uh, from 1952 um, from Atlas comics and we read the story of uh, Basil Wolverton. Okay, and I love, um, I love his artwork. Um, you know, I haven't seen a lot of his work, but uh, I am slowly, you know, building my collection for, of his artwork. Um, when I, you know, actively looking, uh, not too active, but, you know, keeping my eyes open, right? So someone posted a comment saying that um, he did all the covers for Plop and, um, and maybe we'll get through to these at some point but we're not going to do the readings on these basically what i was going to, going to do let me show you the covers was uh you know open up the books and on the back of these the cover is uh, uh larger or a little bit different uh look at the artwork for these covers and we're going to just look at some random stuff inside uh, Sergio, Sergio Aragonis, um, the creator of Gru the Wanderer, uh, he's done a lot of work in this. Uh, I just flipped through a couple of them and they looked fun, so I wanted to go through it. Um, but maybe we'll get a chance to go through it another day, uh, another time. Um, 
awesome artwork. It just looks beautiful. Right. And these are all uh, Basil Wolverton, Wolverton uh, trippy artwork. And it's, this collection is not complete, so maybe um, we'll do a reading um, when I get the full, you know, whole collection together and just uh, go through all of it, maybe. Another one, uh, another um, sort of stack of independent comics that I put aside um, that I thought maybe we'll go through. Um, again, it was someone that posted a comment, so I tracked some of these down. Uh, they're not first prints. They're well, actually, there is one first print in this, uh, but these are Zap comics, uh, and these uh, came out uh, in the late 1960s, 70s. Um, and again, it's uh, it's some of the main dependent uh, uh, artists that produced uh, work for this, and maybe we'll get a chance to take a look at the stuff uh, at some point later. Okay, Robert Crumb uh, did work here. I'm not too familiar with uh, many of the independents uh, from this genre. Anyway, this is more adult oriented. mature readers uh, so I wouldn't mind flipping through these I flipped through, through a couple just very quickly just to see what it was like and they look great and the covers are amazing right um, so this is another stack that we didn't get a chance to read uh, maybe we'll do another day and uh, one thing I wanted to I go I really like uh, I like Carnage um, Amazing Spider-Man I really like uh, Carnage I like I like Carnage better than Venom way better than Venom um, I think Carnage has a huge potential um, it's just too bad it's uh, you know a lot of the material coming out on it is not uh, is not more mature because I think that's what Carnage really needs and this is the first, uh, it's Amazing Spider-Man number uh, 359, 360, 361, 362, 363. And uh, these are the first, um, well, two cameo appearances of uh, Cassidy uh, before he came Carnage. And this is the first appearance, first, I think the one before this, 360 has one cameo shot of him. But this is the first full appearance of Carnage. And Cassidy uh, made his first appearance in uh, uh, Amazing Spider-Man um, 344, I believe. So uh, maybe one day we'll get a chance to go through that. Okay. Uh, and one reason I didn't get to this one is because uh, uh, we sort of do end up doing in, the, in this reading uh, session that's, uh, that we're going to do, uh, that you know we've done basically um, I do end up doing something similar to this and um, you'll find out what it is uh, you know if you want to check out the description of the site um, another batch of comics that we didn't get through were um, comics have been used uh, for politics a lot okay and I really don't have uh, too many political comic books uh, the first one that i recall is this one that i bought and i bought this this is a reprint of uh, martin luther king's uh, montgomery story uh, i believe when they marched uh, marched to montgomery or took the bus the bus boycott i believe i forget um, but this is a reprint and i you know skimmed through this and read parts of it uh, last year it came out last year and I was sort of curious to see, uh, look at some of the political stuff from back during that period, 1960s. So I ended up grabbing uh, Kennedy and uh, Eisenhower. Um, and maybe we'll go through these at, at another time. I just wasn't in the mood to read uh, politics. For anyone uh, that wants to uh, have a better appreciation for um, the civil rights, uh, I don't want to call it struggle, just uh, the civil rights movement, just equality, I guess. Um, 
there's a documentary series out there um, I mentioned this during the um, I believe um, uh, when we were sharing the showing you some of the some of the comics in my collection and I couldn't remember the name and I looked it up again but eyes on the prize if you want to know about the civil rights movement uh, it's a documentary series which is absolutely brilliant okay um, I thought about going through this one didn't get a chance double life of private strong that's number two uh, TV uh, comic books ended up making uh, the comic industry made a lot of comics based on TV series and uh, I thought we'd do you know at least one TV uh, based comic books and comic book anyway and we have I just grabbed uh, a different one than these ones okay and you know we will be reading through that um, and I do actually want to read through this one uh, uh, the Avengers right I used to watch this show uh, it was a cool show um, it's from the 19 I'm not sure if it's the 1950s I think 1960s okay and I got my box uh, box here and a couple of comics here but uh, well one set that we did go through another set that we didn't uh, I'll show you the one that we didn't um, but let's uh, do this one um, I thought maybe maybe um, we go through um, the first Superman flash rays uh, but I ended up uh, you know putting another video together with uh, a different Superman story uh, the magnificent Superman story so two two Superman readings uh, was gonna be a little bit too much so maybe we'll save this for another time and this is the third flash race uh, the second flash Superman race and the first superman flash uh, race and there's been a few of them uh, throughout you know superman and flash days right they've had a few different races this was the first one um and this comic is you know it's not in the best of shape but intact readable right so maybe we'll get that then another day um first appearance of Catwoman Silver Age Catwoman anyway thought maybe we'd go through this uh, didn't get a chance okay. maybe we do it another time and I think this is the second appearance possibly can't remember this is uh, Superman's girlfriend Lois Lane number 70 and uh, number 71 okay so we left these on the table didn't get a chance to read them okay. let's see <laughs> there's a couple other books uh, I used to watch uh, I Love Lucy a lot so I thought I would read you an I Love Lucy comic book or I would read an I Love Lucy comic book and share it with you but uh, we didn't get a chance just wasn't in the mood uh, we did a but we did do a different uh, humor comic book which I think uh, you might enjoy now this one we will get to at some point we will most definitely be reading at least one Sandman story at some point uh, during our comic book readings right. this is Sandman number one okay. I don't think we'll read this one uh, I wasn't planning on reading this one it was either a toss-up between uh, well it was a toss-up between Sandman 
And this is uh, number two, yeah, number two, number three, number four, right? I hadn't made up my mind which one to go down. This is number four. Number three, number two, right. Yeah, so I hadn't had made up my mind uh, which one to read yet. It was a toss up between this and uh, let me show you what else was on the table. And uh, I was leaning more towards this actually, which is. Uh, if you watch the videos uh, that I did before with the Shonen comic collection, Hellblazer, right? Um, and Hellblazer has some amazing storylines, but this is the one um, I was going to read you guys. Okay, Hellblazer number uh, 151, Brian uh, Azarello. Azarello, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Um, this one. This storyline was uh, good intentions. It was a six-parter, and for some reason, this one really stuck with me. Uh, this is part one. Okay, and uh, you know, other people, uh, you know, this this one is probably not in people's top ten list. It is in mine. But uh, majority of people, um, not very many mentioned this one. Um, Hellblazer number 41, a lot of people say Garth Ennis. This is the one uh, quintessential Hellblazer reading. I still haven't read this one. Okay. And this is uh, Hellblazer number one. And number two. I was just going to show you guys these and read the Brian uh, Azzarello, um, the Good Intentions uh, storyline, which is, wow, it just, it wasn't, uh, it didn't involve too much magic, which is, uh, you know, uh, something that John Constantine Hell Hellblazer is known for, but it was uh, very, uh, a twisted storyline well worth the read uh, and the last oh, actually there's a couple of things here that we're going to do a read for um, I definitely wanted to do a humor comic reading for you guys and we ended up doing one uh, it was a toss up between what we've read and uh, <laughs> the tech <laughs> and uh, I'm not sure if um, you guys know who the tick is. The tick is uh, is uh, a superhero uh, that came out in. This is the first appearance of the tick. Uh, these things were numbered uh, five thousand, and uh, this is tick number two. It was numbered up to three thousand. Okay, and it's a it's a dingy character. It's uh, it's like even more crazy than madman right more funny more slapstick really and um, it's um, if you were you know watching tv shows back in the 90s there was an animated series of the tick which was fantastic it was very very good and there was a live action tv series that ran i don't know how it ran for one season i can't remember how many episodes it was it was super funny. I was very disappointed when it got canceled. Okay, so, you know, almost read the tick. We we're gonna read uh, the first appearance. I think tick number one is actually a reprint of this. Um, but maybe we do this another day, okay. Now, those are the comics that we left on the table that you know, I thought about reading, came close to reading, and uh, decided not to. Now, let's take a look at the comics that we have read. Oh, there's actually a couple more here. And I know I, uh, when I was showing you guys, uh, 
uh, my comic book collection I showed you guys these and I said maybe we'll get a chance to read through them this is uh, wanted okay. from the golden age of comics and uh, I just have these two issues and I thought maybe we'd read through one of them well, we didn't get a chance sorry okay so maybe we'll get uh, reading one of these at some point later in the future just beautiful artwork I love the golden age of comics there was some amazing stuff being put out and we do uh, read one of the reasons we didn't read this is because uh, we do end up reading a couple of books uh, from the golden age and I think you'll be uh, very very pleased with what we took a look at okay and uh, Actually, there's one other set here. That I thought we'd read. And uh, we'll show you some of it anyway. This slain that I had mentioned before with Bisley's work. And there's uh, the three issues here. And I thought I would flip through and read you a couple of pages from each one, two or three pages from each one. Uh, but we'll leave this for another day uh, because we do take a look at some Bisley work uh, while we talk about Bisley anyway uh, in, in a different video that we've done so we do get a Bisley fix okay now what did we end up reading in these batch of videos what should we start with I'm not sure which one I've already shot shot them I have to edit them so I'm not sure which one I'm gonna put up first how about we put which one let's see which one, which one? Oh, okay. how about we this one up first okay we're gonna read through Magnus robot number a <laughs> robot fighter number five but we're not gonna read the Magnus story we're gonna read the flip side which is this is a flip book Magnus robot fighter number five um, as far as I'm concerned the most important valiant book out there now it's in the top five of everybody's most important valiant book has to be right because on the flip side of magnus number five on the back side is rye number one okay and this is the story we're going to read and uh, the reason this book is super super important because this is the first original valiant character it's the first appearance of rye and it you know with magnus and solar and rye it was sort of the beginning of the valiant universe being introduced okay very important book a great read and magnus uh, robot fighter number five six seven and eight uh, they were the invasion storyline and on the front front side was the magnus story on the back side would be the rye story right so magnus number five had rye number one magnus number six has rye number two seven has three eight has rye number four so those are the first four appearances of rye and they're also the first uh appearances of a lot of characters uh that exist in the raw universe and in the valiant universe okay so we're gonna have a read through that then it's a nice read and valiant comics are absolutely amazing right that's one reading we've done the next reading let's do this the next reading now um when I was showing you my comic book collection I told you there's two books I have in my collection which are two of my favorites 
and we're going to read the EC Comics annual um, from 1952, which is the best-selling or best-reviewed 16 stories of EC Comics from 1951. So it's a compilation of uh, um, 16 different stories from EC Comics. And we flip through this thing and we, re -re we end up reading uh, one story. And it's, it's awesome, right? EC Comics. In-depth stories, very story-driven, beautiful colors, amazing science fiction artwork, right? And this is uh, another reading that we end up doing. And, uh, well, this is the second one of my... And uh, the second book, that's one of my favorites in my collection right and this is the EC annual for 1953 uh, 16 of uh, I guess either best-selling or top rated stories of 1952 for EC comics right and we do the same thing we flip through this and read a story and it's uh, a fantastic story uh, the story is uh, by Ray Bradbury right I had no idea still have a lot of EC comics to collect and read up on them, right? Um, another comic book that we end up reading, and this is the one that there was a toss up between this and the tech, and this is uh, Barry Ween, right? Boy genius. Now I came across Barry Ween last year. Um, for my for my local uh, comic shop they had uh, uh, they had a lot of graphic novels for sale they were like two bucks a pop I never I hadn't heard of Barry Ween so I went through and I bought a ton of graphic novels from them I would just go back every week and look through the graphic novel box and grab a whole stack and I was reading a lot of graphic novels and I read Barry Ween and I couldn't stop laughing. It was absolutely hilarious. And uh, what I ended up doing is going online and grabbing all of the Barry Ween comics. Uh, and there's three different story arcs. Uh, there's Barry Ween, the first three comics that uh, Judd Winnick put out. And Judd Winnick is the is the creator of Barry Ween. There's uh, three issues for this. Okay, so that's Barry Ween, Boy Genius, the first set, first appearance. And then there's the Adventures of Barry Ween, Boy Genius, number two. And again, there was three three uh, three comics in that set. And then there was uh, a Monkey Tales, and I think this is a six issue. Uh, yeah, this is a six issue run, right? So we're just gonna look at the covers of these and read Barry. Well, especially, we did sort of just flip through this and uh, what we ended up doing is uh, reading Barry Ween number one. Uh, and I hope you guys enjoy. I, you know, I got a little too excited on it. And I couldn't stop laughing at certain parts um, because it's, uh, it is super funny. I just, I still find it funny. I read it, I don't know how many times, like four or five times now. And uh, it still cracked me up. Okay. So we got a Barry Wing video. Uh, what else? What else? We got. Okay. Now, this book, um, one of the reasons I didn't read a political book, one of the. Pro I didn't pick one of the political comic books to read is because I ended up reading this Lobo um, and the reason we read this is because politically uh, historically this is a pretty important book it's the first black hero in comic books in the United States anyway I'm not I don't know about the rest of the world but this is the first uh, US uh, black hero in comic books and it was uh, published by Dell 
um, the date on it was uh, 1965, if I remember correctly. Okay, and we end up reading through this, flipping through this, and we end up reading two, two, two or three stories. And um, it's interesting, it's pretty heavy. Okay, uh, I was surprised actually how heavy it was. So this is, uh, you know, we end up going through the book and I consider this to be uh, more of a political interest on my part than, uh, uh, than story interest. But the story surprised me. I was, uh, I was pleased on how heavy it was. I thought it was going to be lighter. Now, the next book we ended up reading is, uh, or one of the books we ended up reading is, uh, let me bring this out. Rain, eh? So one of the other books we end up reading is Omega Man number 37. And um, when I was showing you my comic book collection in uh, you know one of the last videos, uh, I did mention that I'm a Lobo fan, and I think we looked at this comic, and uh, we end up uh, reading this and. Uh, Taking a look at uh, some of the Omega Man books uh, because Omega Man is the first appearance uh, of Lobo, right? With Omega Man number three. And they consider this a cameo appearance, but, uh, and I thought it was a cameo appearance, but I cracked it open and uh, you know, it was more than a cameo. He appeared in a few different pages and a few different panels. So I don't know if I would call this a cameo. Uh, but uh, it is considered to be a cameo. So this is the first appearance of Lobo, one of the best characters out there. I really like him. Uh, and this Lobo is a little different looking than uh, the Lobo uh, that came afterwards. Right? But the essence is there, and it's, uh, it's a very interesting read. Um, a fun read. The Omega Man I really liked. And one thing I'm going to show you right now is Omega Man number two. Let me just show you this because I found this to be interesting. I flipped through some of the Omega Man. I've read a lot of these. Uh, didn't end up finishing the series, but I've read a lot. Um, and. If you have Omega Man number two, okay, what you might want to do is flip to the back, okay, go all the way to the end. Right, this is the back cover, the last page. And if you look at the picture that they have, right? On the cover of Omega Man 3, it looks different. The coloring is different than uh, what actually came out. And if you look at the logo, it looks a little bit different. I would love to get a big scan of this and do a comparison, uh, which I thought was interesting. Yeah, neat. Didn't notice that before, right? 
so I wonder how close to uh, the printing deadline they went with the design of logo either way brilliant right so we end up taking a look at uh, Omega Man the first appearance of Lobo and uh, that's where we talk about uh, Lobo appearing in some of the other books and you know talk a little bit about Billy and I do show you uh, you know my favorite car co comic book cover and this is basically my favorite comic book cover of all time this demon number 12 and it's got uh, Lobo on it with the demon in the background. This is Bisley's cover. And he does amazing work. I love his art. Right? His covers and his internal stuff. The, what he does uh, inside the box. He's got two different styles. Okay, slain the horn god. The whole thing is like this. Uh, which is beautiful. And we talk a little bit about uh, the Lobo. Now, one of the other books we ended up reading is uh, uh, related to a TV books uh, that I mentioned. There was comic books. Uh, it was a toss up between uh, Get Smart, uh, uh, The Avengers, and uh, what was it? Actually, not Get Smart. Uh, yeah, I think so. Get Smart, The Avengers, or National Velvet. And we end up reading this one, National Velvet, uh, just because uh, for me the uh, National Velvet uh, was based on a book, which a movie came out before this, and and then the TV series. So this is an adaptation of the TV series, and uh, in the original movie is Elizabeth, Elizabeth Taylor and uh, Mickey Rooney, um, and for me I didn't. I didn't know about National Velvet. My first exposure exposure to this, I guess, this story arc uh, was International Velvet with uh, Tatum O'Neill in 1978. And that's a movie from my childhood that stuck with me. Later on, I watched National Velvet. It was very good as well. Um, so we ended up having to read through this. Okay, Just look through it. It's uh, sort of a compilation. And these are... Uh, you know the next this is number one number two um, of the next series that came out but this is the first appearance I guess first publication of National Velvet in comic book format and it's from uh, Dell four color uh, it's number nine 1195 okay. it was interesting cute the next thing we do is, um, I think that's the last, this is the last set, is it? Wow, we already covered all the books we read. So there should be, I think there should be a total of eight books. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. But one of the other books we end up reading is, well, it's multiple books, and it's the Superman story arc, and it's the ultimate Superman story arc, which is the Doomsday storyline, right? So, this comic, uh, Superman Man of Steel number 17, is the first cameo appearance of Doomsday. He appears in the last page, and it's just the fist punching through the wall. And in Superman, Man of Steel number 18, he makes his first full appearance. Okay, so what we end up doing is uh, going through the first four cameo appearances of Doomsday uh, with the last panel punching through the wall. And we do read the last uh, panel of uh, the page preceding the Doomsday punching through the wall because uh, the panels, the discussion before they start showing Doomsday um, had really amazing foreshadowing. Uh, the Superman story arc was, the Doomsday storyline was um, absolutely fantastic. Uh, during that period, if you were around, uh, 
everybody was reading it. Um, it just became a circus with the media taking over. and um, It was incredible what happened. And you know what? It was, it was a fantastic storyline, well worth reading, a lot of fun. And if you haven't read uh, Superman's Doomsday storyline, um, you know, they've taken all the stuff and put it together in the trade paperbacks and you can read it. And they're oh, it's, it's very powerful. It was very well told. Okay. And we do take a look at uh, the first appearance, full appearance of Doomsday. We don't read through the story, but uh, we do just sort of flip through it. I think we did anyway. Um, and we do take a look at this one. This is the one that I, I consider to be a more important issue than uh, Man of Steel number 18. Um, it's in Justice League of America number 69 that uh, I believe is the first time that Doomsday is called Doomsday. Booster, Go Bo Booster Gold refers to it. Okay, so we end up reading uh, some panels out of this one as well. Okay. And um, this is the death of Superman, uh, Superman number 75. And this is sealed. We didn't take a look at it. Um, and we don't want to take a look at it. If you haven't read through all of the Doomsday story in line, story arc, uh, you don't want to read this. It, it'll spoil it for you, right? Uh, you want to build up to it. It was a brill brilliant storytelling on uh, DC's part, uh, the way they you know the way they put this whole thing together okay and that's um and that's our reading okay we end up eating reading um eight comics if i counted correctly and uh, they're fun it's sort of diverse it ranges from the golden age to modern age uh, with barry win and uh, uh, funny horror humor uh pretty intense some of it right and some political stuff um, and I hope you uh, enjoy the reads. Okay, uh, I'll be back at some point. We'll either take take a look at more of my collection or do more readings. And I do have a couple comics that I do also want to frame. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.